Hey, what's going on? Super Kinky Ninja here. Welcome everybody to the channel. I know I haven't done a video in a while, but I have decided that I'm actually going to start doing videos of a bit of a higher quality, do a lot more video editing, and really get into this, uh, you know, making all the videos look nice and what have you. So today I've got um, a series that I'm going to try and start. Not really a series, just a video called Minecraft Pro Tips. So um, hopefully you guys will see this, and this should be stuff that... You know, it's in the game, it's kind of always been in the game, but maybe not every player knows about it. Some of the stuff's relatively advanced, some of it's just, if you've been playing for a while, then you know. But my goal is, by the end of this video, you guys um, get reminded of something, or learn something new, or see me do something that makes you think, hey, that's relatively easy, um, I'm going to start doing this, and it's how to play Minecraft like a pro. So, all I did was start a new world, we're going to start off right away with the first tip, and I'm just going to grab an axe here. And actually, I'll start with a really cool tip, and I'll do this by taking this wooden plank as well. And uh, the first thing you can do is hit F3, hold it down, and then press H. And if you do that, hopefully I did it right. I'm pretty sure it's F3 and H. Um, when you go into your inventory, you uh, can see, let's see if I can do this right. Cut out a piece of wood. You should be able to see right there. Yep, right there at the bottom you see the durability. It says durability 58 out of 59. That's how many blocks you can break left with that item. So if I took this pickaxe and I broke um, a piece of... Well, gravel's not really the right thing, but if I break it, you can see that it's now 58 out of 59. So if you do that, um, instead of you know just fighting with the sword or kind of hoping that you have enough durability to mine out... Um, some amount of ore that you see in the ground you can just press F3 plus H and then you can just check your durability um, to see how it works you can also use this if you want to repair items so if you guys remember uh, you can take a pickaxe and you can take another pickaxe and that will repair the pickaxe what it does is it takes the durability of both of them together and adds 10% so if you want to know if you're taking two pickaxes and you're putting them together and you don't want to waste any durability if maybe they're both pretty close to half you can just sort of you know look at how much durability they have left in value form and then do the math and then that will keep you from wasting um, a pickaxe all right here's something that I see people do all the time and it really is infuriating um, because it seems like such a simple thing to me, but maybe people just didn't really think this through, and it's when you're crafting armor and when you're crafting tools. I, um, figured this out very quickly after playing Minecraft, um, but every time I see a YouTuber go into it, you know, I still see them going, okay, um, alright, so I want to make a helmet, so I'm gonna do that. Oh, they don't even do that! If you, if there's something in this block, like, if you're making a helmet, they'll do this, and then they'll put down the iron, grab the helmet, Put the helmet here. Don't do that. One, two, three, four, five. You can keep the iron in your hand. You can hold shift and then just click on the helmet and it will put it right into your inventory and it's fantastic. But I see them doing this. They go one, two, three. Let me just make myself a pair of pants. Move the pants. Let me just uh, make myself a piece of body armor. Do that. Please don't craft that way. What you want to do, first off, is you can hold the button and just draw out what it is you want to craft and then just shift click it. But you can make pretty much all this armor in one go. First, you make your chest plate, right? And then on top of the chest plate, what you want to do is put an extra piece of iron to make a helmet. So an extra one here, 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 and here. Alright, so now you see where the twos are is where it's going to make a helmet. And then you want to add a couple more to make boots. So you're going to do one, two on this side, and one, two on that side, and that will make the boots. And now you can grab the chest plate, and it's automatically going to make a helmet. You can grab the helmet, and it's automatically going to make boots. You can make the boots, and then you've already done all three. And then all you have to do is go back, make the pants, and bam, now you have pants. And that's so simple. So let's see how quick this we can do this. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds, and I just made a complete set of iron armor. I didn't need to click and drag anything. You know, absolutely efficient. Highly recommend you guys do this if you're making a full set of armor. It is so much faster. Oh, and one other thing that I forgot to mention. If you hold shift and you click this from your inventory, it will equip it. So you can equip everything that you want, and then if you don't want it anymore, you can shift-click it from the um, equipment slot, and it'll just throw it into your inventory. So do that as well if you have a lot of armor you're switching between. I forgot to mention, this also works if you're making tools. You can do one, two, one, two, and that will make two handles. You can put three here for a pick. Oh, actually, we can do three at a time. We can make 
three sticks, we can make one, two, that will make a hoe, and then one more right there, excuse me, and that will make a shovel. So now we'll just shift click, that made a pick, shift click, that made a hoe, shift click, that made a shovel. You can also do this um, in a similar fashion, you can do one, two, one, two, three, and you can go one, two, three, that'll make an ax, one, two to make the hoe, and then one to make the shovel, and then you can make an ax, a hoe, and a shovel. So depending on if you want a pick or if you want an ax, you can do it in that fashion, and you can make three tools at once without, you know, even missing a beat. All right, another tip that I want to show you guys is when you're chopping down trees, you've probably done this before, you've cut down all the tree, and then you go to get the last piece, and it's out of reach you can't get it anymore and usually it's only a piece or two and that's really annoying so what I've gotten into the habit of doing is don't knock out the bottom piece first knock out um, the piece right above it and then jump on to the bottom piece and this a lot of the time since you're usually only about a block away will allow you to get every piece in the tree and if you don't all you gotta do is take any block jump up and put it down and then you can just go straight up and get every piece of the tree so that's super super effective Another thing you should keep in mind if you're in a rainforest biome and you've got these trees that are really, really thick and they go all the way up and you're really not able to get all of them, what you can do is just make a staircase like this, just two by two blocks, and then just keep cutting around the outside of the tree, and that'll pretty much let you get to the top of the tree every time without any single problem. And then when you're up here, you know, you can leave the leaves and just jump to like another tree like this, and then all you gotta do is dig down, and then you can get every single piece of the tree on the way down. So that's also another really effective way to get all the trees, um, all the wood out of the trees. Alright, so I know everybody's been in this situation before, you're mining across the bottom of something, suddenly you get close to a bottle, or uh, not a bottle, a body of water, and there's a whole bunch of sand in front of you, there's a wall of sand and you need to get through it. Now, what most people do is they take a shovel, I don't happen to have a shovel right now, so I'm just going to use this pick, and they just stand here, and they just keep picking at this bottom block. Now, while this seems like the smartest thing to do, there is a quick way to get rid of a large amount of sand, and that is to just grab a torch, break the bottom block, and as soon as you do place the torch oh I didn't do that right as soon as the block breaks break place the torch and the torch will break everything that's above it I'll do that for you guys again what I'm doing is I'm breaking this bottom block and the second I see it break I'm right clicking to place the torch if you mess it up something like this will happen that's not a big deal um, even if you mess it up the way that it, the torch destroys every piece of sand that's above it will save you way more time than breaking them one by one. This will also work with gravel and anything else that falls due to gravity. Right now it's just sand and gravel. There is going to be a couple updated blocks. I think maybe even in the new update that should also work with gravity. So I'm under the impression that it'll work with that too. So very important thing to keep in your arsenal. Very useful. Okay, something that I think everybody should be taking care of, whether or not you're playing like a pro or if you're just playing casually, is heart hot bar management now the hot bar is this thing down here it's uh the 10 slots down at the bottom of your screen that you can quickly slide between items you can slide between them by um pressing the button on your uh you know number pad or the number row above your keyboard or you can just scroll the mouse wheel and that changes between it and i see everybody do things um like they go into their inventory and they change up things in their inventory but they don't change their hotbar and it's really important that you do change your hotbar to work with the way that you play and the way I, that I play is I kind of always keep my hotbar ready for anything so in the first one I always have my pick or my shovel I never keep them in the hotbar at the same time um, I always have one out and I'll switch in and out of my inventory unless the only thing I'm doing is building um, I'll always have the pick as my first and then I'll always have my diamond sword or whatever weapon I'm using a sword or an axe right after that and I know this because if I'm mining somewhere and I suddenly see an enemy all I have to do is roll my mouse wheel down one slot and I'll always get my sword after that what I do is I keep my bow I always want to keep my bow on my hotbar. I think it's very important because if you get too close to a creeper, I mean, you want a natural reaction, and I don't want that natural reaction to be my sword if I don't have a very good sword. You can't really rush a creeper with um, a wooden sword, you know, if you're if you're trying to play quickly. After that, I usually leave um, a blank space um, just for now because this totally changes based on what I'm doing. So if I'm building a new house, this might be like a block. If I'm uh, going underwater, this might be something that like I'm collecting. If I'm killing squids or if I'm trying to collect um, coal and I want to keep track of how much coal I have, I'll put the coal in this empty slot right here and that way I'll know how much coal I have. After that, I always want to keep a block regardless of what I'm doing. I always want to keep at least one block in my hotbar so that I can just do this and get out of the way of anything that's coming. Or if I want to block off a passage really quickly, just things along that line. Um, if I want to switch and go across lava, I mean, I always want to keep either dirt or um, 
I'm actually using the monster egg, but um, you know, the cobblestone, uh, something that's just quickly there and um, fills up and then doesn't get in the way. After that, I always want to keep a water bucket. You, I, there are so many things you can do with water buckets um, that are just unbelievable. Um, I'll even throw a pro tip in the middle of this pro tip. If you guys are trying to get a whole bunch of seeds because you want to start a farm, just find some grass and freaking throw down a bucket of water. And then it knocks out all the grass. It makes a whole bunch of these seeds. You can see that there's a bunch over there and you can just do that over and over again. And, you know, the water buckets are just in, in like unbelievably useful. After that, I always want to keep either food or a healing potion. Usually not both. I'm just doing this to show you guys. You always want to keep food, you know, to keep yourself um, not starving. And you also always want to keep an eye on your food. If you only bring a certain amount of food with you, I would always want to keep it visible so that I know if I only have one steak left. And if you're going into a big fight, I always want to keep my most powerful potion in my hotbar because... Potions can only occupy one per slot, so if I have an instant health potion and I only have one, that's something that I need very, very quickly. So if I'm fighting against the Ender Dragon, I don't want to have to jump into my inventory and check things out while he's a fire and fireball, so always keep that there. And then finally, torches, unbelievably useful. Um, you always want to keep them in your hotbar, obviously, because you should be using them constantly. You should be lighting up every seven blocks, um, because that will prevent monsters from spawning. Monsters spawn in a light level of seven or below, so you want to leave, um, torches every seven, maybe every six blocks, um, to prevent them from spawning. So, that is my hotbar management. I highly recommend you do this. If you guys change yours a bit, go ahead, but definitely torches, food, water, um, a bucket of water, a block, a weapon, and just for convenience, your tool, but those are key in your hotbar. All right, the other thing I want to point out is just how useful a bucket of water is. Now, we all know that if you're on fire um, or if there's a bunch of mobs coming at you, you can drop a bucket of water and it will push away the mobs. It will put you out of fire. If you see a whole lot of lava, you can use a bucket of water to put out the lava and turn it into something that you can walk on. Or you can use a bucket of water like I showed you right over there to get a whole bunch of seeds. But did you also know it can save you from fall damage? That's right, and you don't need to be a pro to do it. So if I were to jump from here and hit the bottom, bam, oh no, I took a bunch of hearts. Now, it doesn't matter how far you from, from fall from. I'm not even going to keep the water bottle in my hand at first. I'm going to see, oh, I'm falling switch to the water bottle place it down and it prevents me from taking damage i think i might have actually taken damage right there so i'm going to do that again um now obviously if you want to just jump off a big cliff you could just keep the water bottle uh, water bucket in your hand but i'm going to show you if you get knocked off switch to the bucket place it down and you saw me take damage from that height before and i didn't this time so it is not mlg pro stuff it is definitely something that can be pulled off with just a little bit of help or just a little bit of practice and then you'll be able to pull it off in a bunch of places without taking damage and it is a very good trick to learn whether you're a pvb player or if you just end up falling down a lot i mean a bucket of water is just such a good resource a couple quick things that I really think everybody should know about the video menu is if you don't have a super fast computer, there's a couple things you want to do. First thing is you want to set your render distance to way less than the maximum. You actually want to set this as low as you can to get the game running smoothly um, because it's by chunks. So uh, you won't really be able to see what's super, super far away from you. But I mean, if you're having difficulty, you know, lagging because there are too many zombies around you, that's not really the first thing you want to worry about. You want to set your graphics to fast instead of fancy if you don't have a very fast computer. Um, all this does is it changes the textures a little bit it makes it so like um the leaves and trees aren't see-through so it loads less of the level at once and then something that i think everybody should do regardless of what your computer is like is set your brightness to bright the absolute brightest possible i see people playing on monitors and i see other youtubers go into caves and you can hardly see anything if you put the brightness on absolute bright you can pretty much see in a pitch black cave um you know it's still gonna let mobs spawn and everything it doesn't change anything about the game but it makes it so much easier to play when it gets darker because otherwise it gets pretty much impossible to see um unless you have your brightness up in a relatively decent monitor all right, so the next tip that I want to show you guys is about maximizing your damage in combat. And the way to do this is to always crit. Now, you crit only when you're falling from a jump and you'll get those sparkles. It doesn't work if you're going up and it doesn't work if you're sprinting and you're not falling. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is when you want to get a crit, you have to aim at something and you have to be falling to hit it. So when you're fighting something, you always want to be jumping and you always want to be trying to hit stuff on the way down. And critting does quite a bit more damage. I'm not exactly sure how much more damage. I didn't uh, think to look up the number than um, just normal attacking or even sprint attacking. So if you're fighting anything, a creeper, a skeleton, when you get in close, you want to jump and you want to hit while coming down. It'll make those sparkles and you'll do quite a bit more damage. So that should help.
All right, and now the last tip that I'm going to leave you guys with is something that hopefully saves you from the terribly unfortunate event that is mining down super far and losing all of your shit. Now, this has happened to all of us. I'm sure if you've been playing Minecraft for any amount of time, you've always, uh, you've at some point felt the heartbreak that is building a nice house, going very far off to find resources, you go deep into a mine, you die, you respawn at your house, and you have no idea where to go to get your stuff back. It's annoying, and it's very irritating every single time so the way that you can try and prevent that is simple take a nap that's right um you might be far from home right you might have all your stuff here and it might be difficult it might take a while to find your house but at some point you're gonna find your house you might not you know be able to find cave number six thousand that you've been to today so what you should do is put down a bed you know block off some areas so you don't need to be bothered by monsters play some torches, make it feel like home, and then take a nap. This is going to reset your spawn point to where you are right now in this uh, mine. Now, after you break out, you can come over here, and then, you know, maybe the lava gets to you, and it's like, oh, no, what do I do? You get out, you come over here, you know, you get to safety, and maybe you're still taking damage. I'm um, definitely still taking damage. There goes my stuff. I spawn right back here. I immediately get back all the stuff that I can. You know, lava's not the perfect example, but, you know, if this had been a creeper that blew me up, I'd be right super close in the mine, and then I would know, okay, that was bad. Let's take all the stuff that I have left, make myself a pickaxe, climb back out, and find my house. Alright guys, that has been my series, not my series, my video on Minecraft Pro Tips. That's everything that I've learned from my years playing on Minecraft. And hopefully you guys learned more than a couple things from this video. And you will be able to pass them on to somebody else. I hope that you learned something that you will be able to use yourself. I hope you learned something that's going to be able to keep you alive, maximize your diamonds, do what it is that makes in Minecraft Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys could leave a like, a comment, a dislike, I don't even care, just some sort of response on the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'd really love to see this video do well because I would really love to see you guys do well in Minecraft. So, catch you next time. Peace!